Hi guys, welcome to Random Thoughts Thursday. My name is Maddie Kempf, and today I have a really amazing interview to share with you. Um, this interview is something that's different than any of the other ones that I've done. One of the major differences is that this person is not a barrel racer. However, I feel like her story is something that a lot of us maybe not can necessarily relate to, but can definitely be inspired by. She is one of the most amazing, humble, unbelievably down to earth people that I know. And I've been lucky enough to know since I was five years old. So today I'm going to share with you an interview with someone who I absolutely admire and think the world of. She is a very good friend of mine who has gone through a really trying time lately and I just feel like her story needs to be shared. So today I would like you to enjoy an interview with my very good friend, Sam LeBlanc. Okay, so I'm here with my friend Sam LeBlanc. And today I wanted to interview Sam a little bit so you can get to know a bit more about her and her story. So. Sam, can you tell me how old you are, where you're from, what you do, and then tell me a little bit about the unique situation that you're dealing with. Okay, so my name is Sam, obviously. Um, I'm 28, and I'm from Kelowna. I grew up in East Kelowna. Obviously, you know that. Yeah. We've with been me. friends since we were in grade one, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, my unique situation is last September, I was given basically... Um, a diagnosis of something that's incurable and fatal, but I don't believe the doctors. So it's just a really interesting thing. Um, stage four lung cancer at 26 is when I got that diagnosis. So it's definitely a unique thing because I've never smoked. I'm super healthy and yeah, my doctors say I'm an anomaly because this is just not a normal Thing. so it's been an interesting no journey yeah well and what did you th so I mean you get this news at 26 how does it affect you what did you think were you mad were you freaked um, out? honestly I remember leading up to the diagnosis I I was like determined to get to the bottom of whatever was going on like I was coughing for three years I had reoccurring pneumonia I had no idea like we just thought it was pneumonia all the time. Like, here's your antibiotics, send you on your way. And like, no follow up, like nothing. Yeah. Cause I wasn't living here. I didn't have a regular doctor in Victoria. So it was just like this run, like run around thing. And then I remember moving home and I got sick again. And I was like, okay, that's it. Like, I need to figure this out. I want to be clear. And I kept asking, like, I just want to be clear of this. And then Finally saw a doctor here and got biopsy and a CT scan and that's when we got all the answers. So the day I went in and got the actual diagnosis, it was both like a shock and a relief because I was like, wow, I finally got an answer, but also like, what? <laughs> like, are you sure? Like, I was like, wait, what? Like, what is, is that an 80 year old lady? Yeah, I know. Right? I'm like, did you get my pathology mixed up? Like, I don't understand. So yeah, it was definitely an interesting moment because I remember handling the news really well my mom was sitting beside me which she freaked obviously so I think her emotions definitely got to me and then I started to get a little bit scared but I just remember like I knew right away that whoa I knew for some reason that I had like some kind of purpose like we all have a purpose on earth but before this happened I was like I got it I I'm here for something I don't really know what it is and then the day I got the diagnosis I was like this is it like this is the thing that's been put on my path for me to get through and work through and share and like this is gonna be big like I just knew so from the bat like I knew I had to be strong I knew just to stay positive because I just it, it scared me but it didn't more so it doesn't it's hard to explain because it's like such a complex but yeah I just remember like walking back to my house and being like mom it's okay I'm gonna be okay like I just had this belief that I'm gonna be fine I'm like I need you to be strong because I I need to be strong for myself but I also feel felt like I had to be strong for her mm -hmm. so yeah it was interesting definitely well and I think what amazes me so much about you as a human and I would always admire this about you but now admire it even more is how positive you are and how great your outlook is so do you think that 
positivity and our mindset about what we want in life and you know what we're going through do you think that that's a factor in you know our healing or maybe our success and what we want yes but I think it goes a little bit deeper than that because like you can be positive all day but like not actually mean it yeah you know what I mean like there's a fine line about like pretending it's always rainbows and butterflies and like getting real Mm -hmm. on your values and like your truth and I think that's where the strength lies is in like what do you really believe in you're capable of or like what it's it's one of those things that's like it it's not in our hands we don't have the answers so to me I'm just like okay I believe that there's something bigger here and this is just a challenge and it's like it's up to you to believe in yourself to like I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this like I am here to shine I'm here to win and like that's just like my mantra all the time um but I definitely think that like Remaining in a positive mindset is definitely key, but you have to really believe in it. And I think that requires a lot more work. You can't just like say, oh yeah, it's fine. And then it's actually not fine. Like you, there's more there. Yeah. There's more work to be done to get to a place where you feel like genuinely okay and like a little bit more on the positive side. I don't know right. if that makes sense. It's kind of hard kind to of instead of well, yeah. I think instead of just saying something, you really have to truly believe it with your whole core. Yeah, and that takes a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah, for well, anybody. I, I just think that it just like takes a little bit more work. Yeah, like you need to do things that actually fill your heart, and you have to be around people that actually love you, and do things that are just aligned with your truth because then you're gonna be happy and positive regardless like yeah yeah so that is big for sure I think people you surround yourself with is like oh that's huge major. yeah we both yeah. learned that the good the cream rises to the top when your <laughs> life falls apart <laughs> yeah so that's so true yeah silver lining <laughs> oh, yeah definitely <laughs> yeah um, well and so the other thing with your story I remember talking to you because Um, you weren't the one that told me about what you were going through. It was actually indirectly because our Sam and I grew up and we're such good friends and our younger sisters are really good friends. And it was through your sister and my sister having this bonding moment that your sister let it leak to my sister who let it leak to me. And she's crying while she's telling me what's going on in your life. I'm like, why didn't Sam tell me? And so there was a turning point for you. And when, you know, finally we were able to talk about it, and you said, you know, came to me and we were talking and, you know, not only just sharing with me, but you were saying like, I want to share this more openly. I'm going to post it on social media. I'm going to be open with the world about what I'm going through. Um, you know, you kind of said that you had that feeling when you got your diagnosis. What was the change there? What happened for you to be like, okay, I got to tell the world what's going on. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, well, first off, I remember like when I first got the news, it was just like close family and like two friends maybe. Yeah. Cause I was like, oh my God, like my world just got rocked. Like I need to talk yeah. to someone. No <laughs> so I remember sharing it with just a couple people, but then just keeping it really close. But I hated the way I felt when I'd walk around town and like, I'm in my hometown. I know a lot of people. And I'd like run into someone at the coffee shop and they'd be like, hey, how's it going? And I'm just like so real all the time <laughs> that like, I'd be like, fine. And like wanted to just like break down in tears because like I wasn't being true, you know, right. like that was so hard for me to walk around like that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I can't deal. Like, yeah. what am I going to do? I'm hiding a huge part of your reality. <laughs> totally. But like, it was a lot to process. So it took yeah. me time to like, just like understand what was going on. And I still had like more tests to do, surgery to book. Like there was, it was just craziness, like right from the get go. (sighs) Yeah. So, um, it took me until after my surgery to put it out there because I think I knew I was going to be off work for a while. I had to recover for at least eight weeks from that specific surgery. And I just didn't really know. I didn't know what the future looked like. So I was like, I'm going to need support. Yeah. Like that's the bottom line here. And then I remember talking to one of my friends about it and he was like, you have to share. Like it would be like, uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, 
um, a disservice. That's the word. <laughs> it would be a disservice, like if you didn't. You know, like this is a really unique story, and I think that you're gonna change people's lives. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna put it up there. And I just remember one night. It was like a couple weeks after I got out of the hospital. I just started writing and that's kind of how it happens it just flows through all of a sudden and I just like write my truth down and I put it out there and I was like okay and that was it and then ever since then it's just been like so much support just like just shrouded and yeah like I didn't really even know how much I needed that yeah yeah so it's been amazing huge. yeah well and then the other thing that's kind of unique to what you're going through I mean having a diagnosis like that at 26 you're faced with kind of options and you know our traditional medical system and we have a good medical system in Canada um or you know you can go the alternative route or both together um you're handling things different than some people would what are you doing for your health to try and beat this well um so my prognosis was not good it was like yeah, incurable, stage four, like it's in your blood, like basically you're screwed. Like they had nothing for me. And like they they said they could have done chemo at the time just to basically give me more time. Right. And to me, like, so then after she said that, she's like, this is your option. And then she listed off the side effects and the risks. And it was like drugs on drugs on drugs on drugs. And I just sat there and it was like, all my mind was being like, no, 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 no. Like, I can't, I won't. I just knew it was the wrong thing. And I was like, well, okay, well, I guess I'm doing this on my own. So that's when I just went full on with my naturopath. And uh, I remember her and I even had a conversation. Like, I had to get really clear on what I wanted to do. And it's a big decision. Yeah. And it was kind of like, you need to own whatever you choose. Because, like say if you did do chemo but you didn't believe in it like you wouldn't get the the healing properties from it because like it's against everything you believe in and like that's where I was I was like it's yeah the mindset thing it's totally amazing. so I was yeah. like well guess I'm not doing that because it would it would be like honestly like if I I don't even want to get into it, <laughs> it <laughs> we, would, we could be here for a long time it's totally. just contrary to the, how you've lived your life up to that point too you yeah know, I always knew you as this you know taking good care of yourself, health freak, basically. Yeah. And it's like, here, I'm just going to put this poison in me. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah, so basically, since then, it was like, got really clear on my diet, so cut out all acidic things, which has been a challenge, too. Yeah. Especially because I'm responsible for myself, so it's like, no one's really holding me accountable, so it's really challenging to, like, stay really on track, but it's, like, the bottom line, you know, like, taking out acidic food, so that's meat, sugar, sugar, like, feeds cancer, dairy, alcohol, just a lot of acidity because right. cancer can thrive there. So you want more of a plant-based because it's alkaline. So that's that. And then I've been doing um, vitamin C IVs, high dose like oxidation cancer support. I do that in my naturopaths. Um, I have a nebulizer, so I breathe in medicine into my lungs. And then I do mistletoe. It's this homeopathic from Germany and there's proof behind it, which is really exciting. Um, it's being used alone and alongside conventional therapies and it's just like a little injection I do in my stomach it creates a inflammatory response so it triggers your immune system to then like look for the hidden cancer cells it's like a natural immunotherapy oh crazy I know and it's just from a tree like it's so cool yeah so I'm doing that and then um, lots of yoga I feel like the yoga is like probably the best medicine because it's like my mind Right. It just keeps my mind strong. I can't even say how much yoga has done for me. Like, I think that's why I was so strong in the beginning because I'd been practicing for so many years and I already kind of got to this place and like I had all this spiritual stuff go on and it just, it was really clear to me. And like, I am very lucky that I can hear my intuition and it's guided me so well on this whole journey. So, yeah. Well, and I think it's, this, I think, almost has made things clearer for you in that way. Because you're like, I almost don't have a choice but to listen to all these things going on in my life. So, totally, you know, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, at that point, it's like, what do you have to lose? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, it's like, this was kind of the only way. 
Yeah. Like the doctors say there's kind of another way, but like to me, my quality of life right now is pretty awesome. So if mm -hmm. I went the other way, I'd be sick. Yeah. I might have, I mean, I don't even like to like entertain it because I'm like, <laughs> just no. <laughs> like that's just not going to happen. Like, right. And if for someone else, doing. that's the choice they want to make. There's nothing wrong with that. But totally. I think that's the amazing thing about you is that you've made a different choice and, you know, in Mm -hmm. will not necessarily know your the outcome of all of it but it's been so good for you and you're right your quality of life has been so amazing mm -hmm. that it's like you know how are you sick but feeling better than you really have for yeah. most of your life it's a crazy yeah. concept I know it's super interesting yeah yeah that's why I don't like the word sick right yeah because I, I feel like that just looks at somebody and it, like, it looks like they're weak and yeah. ill and dying and I'm like I'm vibrant and strong and bright and resilient and I'm like the opposite of sick yeah. So it feels really cool, but at the same time, it's like, well, I do have this diagnosis, so like, what am I? Like, it's like, yeah. I don't even know what I'm classified as, but I feel so healthy. Yeah. Like, I rest a lot. Like, I have to be very mindful of my energy. Mm -hmm. And like, at 28, I probably have less energy than other people my age, but at the same time, like, my body's doing stuff. So, well, yeah. I don't know. I'm just kind of letting it. Yeah, it's yeah. working on curing you, and that, that mm -hmm. takes a lot of energy. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I think yeah. that's kind of all that I have for you, Sammy. But I really just wanted to share Sam's story because, you know, she just amazes me every day. You're such an incredible human. Oh, and you always you. have been, but <laughs> <laughs> even more so, it's like, it just, yeah, you blow my mind every day. So, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with the incredible Sam. Um, one thing I would like to share as well is that Sam's medical costs are not covered by any medical plan because she is um, taking some alternative therapies. So those alternative therapies are very costly and especially for someone who cannot work right now and is work, uh, focused on her healing more than anything, um, just general life costs start to add up. So I'm going to put the link in the description for her Sam's GoFundMe page if you feel compelled Compelled. I'm sure she would be so grateful and I would be so grateful for any generosity that you can show even just a small amount counts and will help her along her way so um, help her with those increasing and in continued medical costs so thank you so much for watching you guys I hope you found some inspiration by someone who inspires me on the daily and someone I think the world of so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week mm -hmm.